popular streamer iShowSpeed has been struggling with a devastating medical condition. Today I want to watch some of his videos and messages that he's put out and react to them, perhaps do some education on the medical conditions he is describing. We will not be speculating on what condition he may or may not have. I think it's really important for when doctors talk about celebrities, that they don't act like they're their doctors, because there's so much information we don't know. None of the information is really validated. So right now we're doing some general education and reaction. Let's get started. On July 28th, iShowSpeed posted the following video to YouTube, presumably from Tokyo, Japan, where he had been traveling. I wanted to make this video if I die. Right now I have one of the worst experiences I'm having it right now, guys. I can't even open up my eyes. So not being able to open eyes can be a muscular problem, but also can be a problem due to light sensitivity. And this is a common aspect of several different types of headaches. I have this thing called a cluster headache right now. The most deadly headache disease. A cluster headache would not be classified as one of the most deadly headache diseases. In fact, the way that we like to think about headaches is to break them into three categories. Tension headaches, migraine headaches, and cluster headaches. And while cluster headaches are incredibly debilitating, meaning that they cause really sharp pain, very bothersome symptoms that make it difficult to go on about your day, they are not diagnosed as a deadly headache condition. There are some headaches known as like a thunderclap headache, which are emergencies and can be deadly. I would not put cluster headaches in that same category. I can't sleep. I can't eat, I can't do anything right now. It's very common for cluster headaches to wake patients up at night. Everything I do is like something pounding my head every time, bro. And I'm so, and I'm so, and I'm so angry. <laughs> It just hurts, like even now, it just hurts. I mean, this type of agitation is one of the potential symptoms of cluster headaches. It's also important to know that if this is your first time experiencing a cluster headache, it's gonna make you very scared. It's gonna make you feel like the world is coming to an end, that something bad's going on in your brain. So it's not unusual for patients going through their first episode with a cluster headache to feel like something very bad is going on. That's why emerging care is usually uh, sought in these situations. Which I know I love y'all if anything happened, bro. I just love y'all if, if anything happened. Bye bye, bro. They're usually episodic, short-lived headaches. And that's one of their more, more distinguishing factors where you have a period of time where you're getting these 15 minute to potentially hour long episodes of really unremitting, sharp, stabbing pain, usually on one side of your head. This type of headache usually also comes with some very unique features. Watery eyes, swelling of the eyes, skin color changes, even difficulty with opening the eye. These symptoms happening in this episodic pattern can be diagnosed as cluster headaches with the help of a doctor. One of the more troublesome factors about cluster headaches is their period of which they're impacting you meaning that there are times where these 15 to hour long bouts can be occurring over a period of months. And sometimes they can happen multiple times in one day. Sometimes they happen every other day. Cluster headaches are so debilitating that we've seen research show that as many as 40 to 50% of people develop symptoms of depression related to their cluster headaches. You could see his eye is very swollen. He's having some orbital edema. Not sure what the patch on his head is, perhaps a lidocaine patch. Very difficult to know in a situation like this, but you could see his eyes impacted. There are multiple theories that exist as to why cluster headaches happen and how they happen. The main theory uh, really focuses on the trigeminal nerve, which is the fifth cranial nerve. It has three distinct branches. That's why it's called the trigeminal. Gives sensory sensation to the face, and then the second second part of it is the hypothalamus. Now that uh, hypothalamus acts as the sensor for that homeostasis. When I say sensor, that means it's merging the world of the neurologic system, the nerves and how it gets all that information, and the endocrine system, which is how it makes impact on the body. Remember, in order to make changes in the body, you can do it through nerves, but you could also do it through hormones. And hormones essentially act as modulators for the body. In fact, there's a whole list here of the hormones that are regulated by the hypothalamus right here. Obviously, people are wondering 
learning about treatments for a condition like this. Usually 100% oxygen with a non-rebreather mask is great for acute attacks, and we do that in the hospital quite frequently. There are also many medications that we can use as oral treatments for cluster headaches. And then if we're having uh, really recurrent attacks, there are actually preventive medications we could use as well. There are some rare instances where surgery can be an option, and we'll talk about that when I Show Speed brings that up. I'm currently still in the hospital, you know, and I'm hospitalized. We're looking at his vitals here on the side. Uh, they look rather normal, which is a, a reassuring sign. But I don't know how long I'm gonna be here. You know, I'm like I said, I am hospitalized. They can keep me here for months, weeks, days, or years. I've personally never heard of a condition where a patient is hospitalized for years. I mean, I'm sure there's rare outliers. If this is truly, in fact, what he's saying, that it's a cluster headache, the idea that he would be hospitalized for weeks, let alone months, is pretty unheard of in a situation like this. I just did the MRE, MRI, whatever it's called. He's saying that he got an MRI because in order to make the diagnosis based on the international classification of headache disorders, you need to rule out any other conditions that can cause these symptoms. The way we think about headaches in medicine is a primary headache, or a secondary headache. Now, a primary headache is happening because the headache itself is the cause, primary. Secondary is happening as a result of another cause. So when we're doing an MRI, we're checking for vascular causes of headaches. We're checking for uh, neoplasm causes of headaches, that's cancer. So we're checking for structural abnormalities that could be a secondary cause of headaches. This hurt me I'm having like a huge, it's like an ache right here and back here. He's describing ipsilateral pain that we just talked about that's necessary for the diagnosis. It's happening on one side. We're getting a check mark on these diagnoses uh, classifications that we need for cluster headaches. The one thing that uh, he hasn't quite said in all his videos is whether or not this is episodic. Is it coming and going? Is he getting periods of remission? There are instances where there is no remission for like chronic cluster headaches. The cluster episodes just keep coming for a really long time, or the periods of remission are just very short. In those instances, you have to be much more aggressive in your management. Every second, I just think I'm gonna die. Generally, every second. I'm not like, because it hurts so bad, I don't know what's going on, my heart being fast. If you have a good relationship with a doctor and they come in and they explain to you, look, I think this is a cluster headache. This is not lethal. This is gonna be very debilitating and annoying until we figure out the correct treatment for you. But once we do, we can get this under better control in many instances. Suddenly that'll calm him down, allow him to rest, allow him to better manage his symptoms. But of course, if you're worried and you don't know and you have this fear of this terrible he head pain without an explanation, it's not unusual for him to think that his life is coming to an end. And he even uh, mentions that his heart rate is very fast. This is a perfect example of how mental health can uh, be disconnected somewhat to physical health. When someone says, I have a pain in my arm and there's nothing anatomically wrong with their arm, doesn't mean the pain doesn't exist. It means the source is not coming from the arm, it's coming from the mind. And in this situation, you could see on the monitor real time, his pulse is normal, but he feels like it's fast because of that mental state he's currently in. Hello guys, quick update. Um, I don't know what I have right now. I'm about to go through surgery right now. You know, he says in this clip that he's about to go through surgery. I don't know if that's necessarily true because while there are several promising but not really proven ways that you can use neurostimulation where they put either a deep brain stimulator or something else to impact uh, the ne neurological function of your brain and nerves. It hasn't been quite proven over the course of long-term efficacy and safety. So we don't wanna rush to do that, especially in a young patient who's experiencing their, what seems to be the first episode of cluster headaches, and yet we don't even know if these are cluster headaches for sure. So we really need to see how this plays out before discussing surgery. Again, this is all if it is a cluster headache, and we do not have that diagnosis on paper only through the words of I Show Speed. I wanna leave you with some information about headaches that I think are not well known to the public. 
And that is red flag symptoms with headaches of when they need to be evaluated by a doctor or maybe even an emergency room. Things that I personally look out for is headaches that get worse with exertion, a patient waking up with headaches, starting their headaches at an older age, headaches that have changed in intensity or characteristics, meaning that they're different from the headaches a patient used to have. We actually have an acronym in medicine called SNOOP4. I think it probably should be called SNOOP5. And the reason that I think it should be SNOOP5 is the P has multiple uses, as you can see here. But I think the fifth P should be pregnancy, because if you are having headaches during pregnancy, that could be a sign of other secondary conditions that definitely need to be ruled out uh, before you just say, oh, it must be a migraine, no big deal. I know this condition is ongoing and there's gonna be updates that are, uh, are gonna be thrown our way. So if anything drastic changes or he continues to improve, I will make another update video. For now, click here to check out a video about a patient that was misdiagnosed and this happens all too often in medicine. And as always, stay happy and healthy, especially to you, Speed.